Dear friends in Christ, may God's grace, mercy, and peace be with you. I invite you now to please to join me in prayer. Lord Jesus, we do give thanks to you that you have invited us to come forward to you with all that is on our hearts and our minds. That you invite us to come to you with our prayers, our petitions, our thanksgivings, our joys, our and our Lord, help us in you. That you all hear our because our people. Lead us, guide us. That even that when you say yes, severe prayer. We seek you. This we pray, Christ, Lord. Amen. Today, I read a story for a number of you, but it's one of the stories I really like. In fact, I, I really like a lot of these Old Testament stories because they, they talk about the people of God. And one of the things you notice about the people of God is that we haven't changed much in the last, well, couple thousand years. We can relate to what Jacob was going through, that wrestling match with God. We can relate to where his heart must have been. And so many uh, Old Testament characters we this with. Whether they're heroic in their faith, they're weak in their faith. We know that we go through times where we feel like we're on to the world where we're still we go and feel like far. We relate to these Old Testament characters. As we look at Jacob, though, Given the story of severance, a story of strength, a story where he wrestles with God to better understand God's will for him. And it takes a minute, let's take a minute to go back before this story, before that wrestling match, because it's important that we know what was going on. See, it had been over 20 years since Jacob had seen his brother Esau. Jacob had made a run for it when Esau wanted to kill him. And if you remember right, remember why Esau wanted to kill him? First, Jacob was a trickster, and he was, went ahead and he tricked his brother out of his birthright. Now, that may not seem like much to you, because whether or not you're firstborn, uh, today we don't generally follow the same rules, but for Esau, that was significant. You may say, a bowl of soup significant? No, it's more than that. See, the firstborn was entitled to a greater portion of the inheritance, a greater portion of dad's land, a greater portion of responsibility. And Jacob had tricked his brother out of that. But as you know, that wasn't really what got Esau's, under Esau's skin. It was when Jacob colluded with his mother, Rebekah, and they stole his blessing. That is what drove Esau to want blood. That is what drove Esau to want to get his brother and kill him. So quickly, Rebekah sent him off. He stayed with his uncle Laban for 20 years, over 20 years, actually. And now he's coming back. Now he's coming back after over 20 years away. After 20 years away, he's coming back to face his brother who he hadn't seen. And he's scared. Imagine for a minute the trepidation you may feel when you have to get together with your family at Christmas time. And not just when you get together with them, but imagine that you've had an argument with them earlier in the year. You haven't talked about that argument yet. You, in fact, Maybe you've exchanged a few messages on the phone or on Facebook, but you really haven't talked about it. And now you have to get together, together for Christmas dinner. Imagine the trepidation you'd feel in your heart. Now multiply that by 100, because that's where we have Jacob this day. Jacob is scared that his brother still wants blood. And this is what leads to the epic wrestling match. After Jacob had sent all of his family over across the Jabbok, here he is wrestling with his thoughts, wrestling with his own heart, and now he wrestles with God. Now in the text it says he prevailed. In the text it says he prevailed in that wrestling match. But I'd like to offer a different word than prevailed there. Prevailed to find translation of the Hebrew word yakol, which is used there. But there's another word that it also is a, a, a second uh, definition that can be used for yakol, and that's the word endured. Because I think that's what God is teaching Jacob here is endurance. And so let me read the verse again. This is verse 28. And I'm going to put endure, instead of overcome or prevailed, endured. Then the man said, Your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with man, and you have endured. See, that is exactly what the point of this was. God was wrestling with Jacob to, for the sake of endurance. The land that he was about to enter... We might think of it as Esau's land, but I think it's important that we remember whose land it was before Esau's. It was Abraham's land given to him by God. This was the promised land. This was the land that was going to go to Jacob's descendants, that was going to go to, his, to, to the people after slavery. And so this was significant. So he wrestled with God to realize that despite his trickery, despite his thievery, that it wasn't his way that was going to gain him the land. 
It was God's way. And I think that's important for our lives too. Not because we use trickery or thievery, but sometimes we try to do things our way. We try to do things how we think they should go. We try to follow things and put things according to our plan. Well, things don't always work out according to our plans, do they? Things don't always, always work out how we intend them to go. In fact, there's a, joking, a, joke, a line that out there that's kind of a joke. If you want to see God laugh, tell Him your plan. I kind of think it's funny, but it really illustrates quite a bit of truth. Because it's true. When we, want to, when we set plans, when we try to plan things out without God, they are destined to fail. Think about it your own life for just a minute. Think about some of the things that you've tried to do in your life. Some of you, 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 you try to grow closer to God. That's a really good thing, a good desire to have. You get into your word more. You spend more time on your knees in prayer. You, you're in worship on a regular basis. But the truth is, it is not us drawing near to Him. It is Him who draws near to us. Beautiful words in Hebrews chapter 7 that says that God draws near to us in our prayer. We can't draw any closer to Him. Some of you, you fight bad habits. Now, I won't ask you what those are, but many people, at the beginning of the year, they have these resolutions that they make to try to stop these bad habits, these addictions in their lives. And we try to do it on our own. We make our own plan. How many folks, after just a month, two months, six months, has that plan long been forgotten? Without God drawing near to us, without God's deliverance, our plans are destined to fail. We have to humble ourselves and we have to admit that to ourselves. Jacob had to be humbled by God. Notice it wasn't as though Jacob won that wrestling match. I, I know it used the word prevailed, but think about who he was wrestling here for just a minute. How that wrestling match ends. God just touched his hip socket and in a moment's notice, that match came to an end. If God had intended for that match to end any sooner, it would have ended sooner. Because God, as Paul puts it, his weakness is greater than our strength our strongest strength. God was using this as a teaching moment for Jacob. God was using this to teach Jacob humility, to, to teach Jacob endurance in his faith, to teach him to persist in his prayer, to struggle against him. So often God works in our lives. So often he works through the difficult times of our life to teach us to struggle with him, to persist in our prayers, to grow stronger in our trust of him, on our own, we don't do this. But when we struggle against Him, when we wrestle with God through these times, we see His hand at work. So often it's easy for us to trust God when things are going our way. To say that it's according to God's plan and according to God's control. When, th when our family is behaving how they should behave. When our finances are agreeable. When, well, when our jobs are agreeable. Well, when our health is agreeable. But it's easy then. It's a lot harder to say God is in control. When things are out of our control. When things are scary. Suddenly our faith that we talk about on Sunday morning has to be more than theoretical. It has to be more than just something we talk about, a good feeling that we get. Our faith has to be something we wrestle with God, something that we struggle against, something that, that, that we seek to seek Him for a greater understanding, endurance. There's a... To kind of give you a thought here about this, there's... A story that I heard from a youth director a long time ago about a young lady who, she was in college a college course for speech. And she was given the, the final exam assignment to, uh, to present a speech that was meaningful, that would leave a lasting impact and would teach the class something. So she chose to, to teach her class about the law of the pendulum. So she takes 20 minutes to lay out her speech. She goes through the entire law, the, the fact that because of gravity and friction, a pendulum will never reach higher than its first point. It'll swing back and forth, but never come back to the same height it started at. And she went on and on for 20 minutes, explaining every aspect of this. Then, with a good illustration, she takes a child's top, ties it to a string, ties that to a thumbtack, and, thumb and places that above the blackboard. She marks the first point with chalk. She lets it go, watches it go back and forth, marches each spot, and shows to the class, by visual illustration, that the pendulum never came to the same point again. 
Well, at this point, the class applauds her. She, they think the speech is over. The professor starts coming down the aisle to, to uh, take, take the class back, and she invites the professor, if he would, to indulge her for a few more minutes. She has him climb up onto the desk to sit on a chair, and, uh, to sit on a chair on top of the desk, and to put his head right against the concrete wall. Now, they have an exposed ceiling, and so earlier, before the class had started, she had taken some 500-pound climbing rope, tied it to the exposed ceiling, and tied 250 pounds of weight to the bottom of that rope. So she takes the pendulum that she'd created, she pulls it right up to the professor's nose. She asks him, do you believe the law of the pendulum? He nods, but he's got sweat that's forming along the bead of his lip, uh, beads of sweat along his lip. And she says, remember, it will never reach the same height as it did before. So do you believe me? She looks him in the eye. He says, yes. So he holds it up there, and she lets go. It whistles across the classroom. It pauses briefly on the other side. It starts coming back. That student later testified she'd never seen a man move so fast than that man who jumped out of his chair. See, theoretically, he believed that that weight would not hit him. Theoretically, he believed the law of the pendulum. Theoretically, he understood that his nose, his face, would not be crushed against the concrete wall. But when the rubber met the road, the faith was not there. Sometimes that's true for us in our faith life, isn't it? Theoretically, we can believe God is in control. Theoretically, we can sit here in church on Sunday morning, we can sing the hymns and we can pray our prayers and we can shout for joy even sometimes, knowing God is in control. But when the rubber meets the road, sometimes we really struggle, don't we? We struggle when we look at our paycheck and we budget it out and no matter how many times we do so, it doesn't balance where we can pay our bills. We struggle when the rubber meets the road and we get that diagnosis from the doctor. And we look at it and we say, well, wait a minute. How am I going to change my lifestyle? How am I going to stop this habit so that I can become healthy? We struggle even in our spiritual lives, specifically in our spiritual lives, when it seems like everything is out of control. It seems like we cry out to God, we lift up our prayers, and we don't hear His voice, that still, small voice, that gentle voice. When the rubber meets the road, when we wrestle with God, when we endure with Him, it truly tests our faith. It pushes us to our limits. When Jacob wrestled with God, it pushed him to his limits. And the morning was still coming, though. Even though he was pushed to his limits, even to breaking, well, dislocating, the morning still came. The morning still came with the Lord's blessing. Even as he endured, as he struggled, as he wrestled with God, that morning still came, and the Lord blessed him. The Lord blessed him beyond the humility, beyond the fact that he was his son, beyond the fact he was going to, going to give him the land. He blessed him in showing him his sins were forgiven. See, sometimes I, I, it, those names that we see in, in the Bible are important. That name Israel that Jacob was given, it means God prevails. God prevails. God prevails. Not Jacob prevails. God prevails. God prevailed over Jacob's weakness. God prevailed over sin, Jacob's sinfulness. God prevailed over Jacob's trickery and thievery. God prevails over our sinfulness. God prevails over our brokenness. God prevails over our, our, our faithlessness, our, our struggles in our lives. God prevails. And He gives us the promise of eternal life. There's still morning yet to come. Yeah, we wrestle through the night. We wrestle through the night on this earth as we wrestle each and every day. Some of us wrestle more than others as we struggle with what God's will is, with what God's plan is. We say the Lord's Prayer, Thy will be done. But Lord, we wrestle against that and we struggle against that. But we know, even in our match, that morning is yet to come. That the light is yet to come because Christ has prevailed over death. 
He has prevailed once and for all over all that Satan could throw at us. Sin, death, the devil was defeated at the cross. And it wasn't a match really at all. For Jesus, yeah, he wrestled with the fact that he had to go there. But when it came down to it, he defeated Satan entirely. He defeated Satan for us. He defeated death for you and for me. And he defeated our sinfulness so that we will one day spend eternity with him. So why do we wrestle with God? Why do we struggle against our Father? We do so because we know what He has prepared for us in advance. We do so because we know that He does have a plan and that even as we go through the struggles of this life, the difficulties of this life, that there is something greater for us, that we may wrestle on this earth, but He has an eternal rest for us. And that is what we are waiting for. That is where our hope is. So may you look at Jacob and his colorful life and see how God could take a sinner, changing him from the one who was the supplanter, the, the heel grabber, and making him the one for whom God prevailed. And remember, he also prevailed for you. May you know this, that even as you wrestle in this life, that even now he is preparing your rest. Amen. Please pray with me. Gracious God, Holy Father, we thank you that you have sent your Son Jesus because he has prevailed over death and sin. He's prevailed over loss in our lives and he has prevailed over all so that we might be with you forever. Forgive us for those times when we trust in our own plans, when we trust in our own ways instead of trusting you. Forgive us for those times when we, when we, when we don't hold to our faith. Lead us always to wrestle with you, to persevere, to endure. Endure in our faith. Because we know that the morning is coming. We know that even as dark as the night may get, even as long and drawn out as the match may become, that there is light in the morning. The light of our eternal rest. We pray that this may be our hope and our strength, both this day and forever. Amen.